Hey, it's Rory with SearchInChild.com and today you join me in checking out a brand new concept smartphone that you may never see in stores. It is called the Vivo Apex 2019. So you may be familiar with the Vivo Apex name and it's the platform that the company uses to showcase a lot of their new smartphone technology. So the first Vivo Apex that we saw back in 2018, that had a motorized pop-up selfie camera that they showcased and then eventually it made it onto a lot more of their mainstream smartphones. So the Vivo Apex 2019 is the successor to that concept phone where Vivo is showing off yet another few new ideas that they have for the smartphone as a concept. So the first thing that they're showing off is, and the first thing we're going to talk about is the new design. So their philosophy was to have more technology with less design and it really shows here. So if you look at the smartphone itself, there are no buttons, there are no ports, there are no holes, there are no lumps, nothing. It's just this smooth sort of pebble-like uh, finish, uh, like a glass pebble of a smartphone that's just all just smooth curves and lines there's no broken seam or anything except for the uh, screen that sits in front so with this new minimalist design language the phone presents a couple of challenges as well as uh, the ability to serve as a platform for vivo to show off some of their creative design solutions so first off there are no buttons so what happens here so they have instead three specific spots on the side of the phone that you can press. These are capacitive, pressure sensitive uh, sections of the screen that you can press and it will uh, trigger corresponding actions. So one corner is the power button, one is the volume up and one is the volume down. We see, uh, we've seen this similar kind of implementation on the HTC U12 which also had that but instead of it being completely flush over here, they had little lumps and I believe that that technology was less uh, elegant than this one because this works a lot better, it's a lot more responsive, it's a lot easier to press, you don't need so much effort and you're almost always pressing the right key as long as your finger is in roughly the right spot. Next was about charging. So there's no USB-C port, there's no micro-USB port, but there's also no wireless charging. That's because this phone is designed to show off the company's new magnetic uh, charging solution, which is through this little strip here. So it works sort of like MagSafe on an old MacBook Pro, where it would just, that you have this like little head that just goes snap and it just sticks onto this and then it charges the phone. Uh, they're telling me that it's a 40 watt charger, which is really, 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 really fast. But uh, we weren't able to test that obviously because this is a concept phone, it's a demo situation. But I can tell you that the magnetic uh, grip on the back of this phone is really, really solid. It's much stronger than uh, what I've experienced on MagSafe, uh, but it also has that same kind of safety net where if you accidentally tug on the cable, it wouldn't just break the port, it would just pop up and that's cool. Next, because there are no holes or grills for the speaker, uh, you might think, oh wait, there's no audio coming out. Well, there is. There's actually speakers that's built under the display from what I understand, and they can actually push sound from the back of the phone and the front of the phone to give you a uh, sort of 3D like stereo speaker sound quality. We've tried it out just now. I'm playing a song because it's not actually connected to the internet. We can't actually watch like YouTube videos, but from that audio, that brief audio playback, it's actually quite impressive how loud it gets. It reminds me a lot of the LG G8's uh, sort of screen vibration stereo speaker setup. It gives me that same kind of volume and that same kind of clarity that is honestly quite impressive for a phone with not a single little cutout for a speaker grill. And finally, you have the last little design tweak or change and that has to do with the camera. So as you notice, the whole back of the smartphone is this beautiful, unbroken, curved glass panel thing that is actually a little bit see-through if you look from there. Uh, it looks really cool, it's very trippy, it's very nice to hold, it's comfortable and it feels very solid. Like, I don't think it's gonna break anytime soon. But there's an another benefit to having this body and it's that there is no camera bump. This is just completely just flush, it's smooth, it's under the glass and there's actually a dual camera setup uh, at the back though. Vivo has told me to not talk about the cameras too much uh, but from my testing it's uh, an ultra wide and a wide angle though I don't suspect that will be like a huge thing, a huge deal about this smartphone. Uh, what it, you may notice though is that there is no selfie camera in front. There is no selfie camera in front and that's because there is no selfie camera in front. Uh, instead, 
uh, because this is a concept phone, they are not here to show off a new selfie camera placement technology just yet. But they have informed me that they are working on a new kind of camera module for a phone like this or a phone in the future that might have this kind of technology and that camera will live under the display. When I asked if it was going to be like a punch hole camera, they said no, uh, they weren't able to confirm but it's going to be a new kind of tech that will live under the screen. So not only will you have a screen that's like without a notch, you also have a selfie camera up front, which is very exciting. But if you do want to take selfies with this phone, you can at least take uh, full advantage of this really glossy back and use it as like a mirror for your uh, main cameras to take a photo of yourself. But now we come to my favorite thing about this smartphone and it is the fingerprint scanner. I know it's a weird thing to like so much about a concept phone with so many cool features, right? But the fingerprint scanner is by far my favorite thing. So as you may notice, there's no fingerprint scanner at the back. There is no fingerprint scanner in front, which either means it doesn't have a fingerprint scanner or it's an in-display fingerprint scanner. Well, you little smarty pants, it is an in-display fingerprint scanner and it lives under the display. But the special thing about this in-display fingerprint scanner, uh, yes, it is an optical-based scanner, is that you can actually unlock your phone by tapping your finger on any part of the screen, any part. So it's not just a fixed spot in the bottom of the screen like most uh, in-display fingerprint scanner solutions are. This is anywhere on the screen, anywhere on the screen. The top corner, the bottom corner. That's because the whole sensor, they've stretched the sensor so that now instead of just living under a small corner in the screen, it actually lives under the entire display. And it will light up when you put your finger there to read your finger and then unlock the phone. It's about as fast as other optical fingerprint scanner solutions that I've used but you have the added convenience of being able to just unlock your phone from anywhere on the screen and I think that this should have been how in display fingerprint scanners should have started out this idea that you had to limit your finger to a specific spot in the screen was always very inconvenient for me and very hard to pinpoint because there's no like groove to tell you that your finger is in the right spot but this this is just awesome I hope to see this on their next smartphone and I can't wait for this kind of technology to like trickle down to every other in-display fingerprint smartphone phone <laughs> in the market right now. And that's it. Those are the really cool sort of next level concept features that they want to show off with this smartphone. But the actual device itself is also, you know, your standard flagship affair. It has a Snapdragon 855 processor and it's actually Vivo's first 5G smartphone, which indicates that they do intend to go into this 5G space. And this phone also comes with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage. So those are very nice flagship specs. But beyond that, they declined to tell me any other specs about this phone because it, this phone isn't about the specs, it's about the cool tech, it's about the new design, it's about the new fingerprint scanner, you know, it's about the new speaker setup. It's about cool stuff that you may see on the next smartphone. So if we do follow, uh, if you've been following Vivo's smartphone launch, you'll know that after an Apex, they will have a next phone, which is the phone that you can actually buy that will actually go on sale with a lot of the features that worked on the original Apex concept phone. So we can look forward to, I can safely say that, uh, in my opinion, we can look forward to a next phone with this kind of features. Uh, sometime in the future maybe. But that's where I'm going to end this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and keep your browser locked to searchinshow.com for everything that matters in tech. In the meantime, if you want to check out another really cool sort of next generation smartphone, you can click up here for a video on the Huawei Mate X, which actually is one of my favorite phones right now. Or you can click here for the latest video that we've uploaded. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.